Good morning everybody, my name is Alex and I've just hit 20,000 subscribers. So that's cool. I was really not planning on this happening, or at least I wasn't planning on this happening today. Um, so I, I would love to sit here and just express fully my gratitude to you. Um, but I've got a lot to get through in this video, so I'm going to save that for my next video, which is going to be a Q&A to celebrate 20k. Uh, so if you have any questions, um, if you want to know my favourite food or why I reject the one true God Almighty, leave it all in the description below or on my social media. And I'll answer as many as I can in my next video. But on to more pressing matters. I... I, I need to make an apology. Um, I, I'm sorry. Okay, a, a little while ago I made a response video to a guy called Pastor Greg Locke um, and in part of the video I, I said that um, in regards to the scientific accuracy of the Bible um, that the Bible implies that the earth is flat um, and that it's actually round and therefore the Bible is probably inaccurate um, but I've just, I've just come across a YouTube video um, and it turns out that, well, at least according to this video um, the, the earth is actually flat so uh, yeah, I, I'm really sorry, I, I, I got that one wrong. There's been quite a few of you suggest to me that I should tackle some of this flat earth stuff because I think for some reason it's beginning to sort of pick up popularity, um, this flat earth society, um, which if you don't know is basically people who believe that we live on a flat earth rather than a globe. And I recently came across this video called Flat Earth in Five Minutes and it's actually a really good quick summary of pretty much all of the significant arguments um, for flat earthers. And you know, I'm not any kind of expert. I've watched quite a few of these videos about flat earth conspiracies. They actually really interest me. Um, but I'm just using sort of common sense and logic here. I, I don't have an extensive knowledge, so I'm just going to sort of go through this video and see what I can come up with. Water, when unmanipulated, is to find its level. So whether you look at a cup of water, a bathtub, a swimming pool, a lake, or the ocean, it's flat. Of course, natural motion is not considered and doesn't equal a curve. Now this is an argument that I don't actually hear very much on these conspiracy videos because it's it's not a very good one when you consider the fact that the Earth is yeah, it's quite large, really. Of course, there's going to be no perceivable curvature when you look at a minute part of the Earth's horizon. Um, and, and when you have pictures of like a glass of water or, or a bath or something, um, these things are independent of the Earth's horizon. So, of course, they're not going to be subject to the curvature of the Earth. We have zero authentic pictures of the Earth and they're all composites. And NASA even admits that they Photoshop Earth images. It is Photoshop, but it's it's has to be. Okay, I think I've got two things here. Firstly, is that this, if this was a logical argument, it wouldn't actually prove a flat Earth. All it would do is rebut an argument for a spherical Earth. Uh, and so even if your argument is a consistent and logical one, it doesn't actually prove your position. And secondly, just because an image has been altered in Photoshop doesn't imply significant falsehood or deceit. Okay, L look at this photo, for example. This image that you're looking at right now has been Photoshopped but that doesn't mean that it's not an accurate representation of reality. All that it means is someone's taken the image into an image editor and adjusted the contrast or the hue or the saturation of it, whatever it may be. Uh, in fact, in doing so, they may have actually constructed a more accurate representation of reality than they would have had if they hadn't touched it at all. Think of it like a panoramic shot. When you take a panorama, all that's happening is you're taking multiple photos and they're all being stitched together into one big photo. The same thing happens with NASA's photos of the Earth. It's very difficult to photograph the Earth. Uh, and so, of course, there's going to be composites, but in doing so, all they're doing is creating an accurate representation of the Earth. But I'll grant you this. However unlikely or improbable it is, it is possible that NASA has just completely faked these images. Um, but like I said before, this doesn't actually prove your position. So let's move on. On numerous occasions, NASA admits that we can't go beyond low Earth orbit, which is between 99 miles and 1200 miles away. The interesting thing is that the moon is said to be 238,000 miles away, which is a difference of 236,800 miles. NASA have indeed made it quite obvious that to go beyond low Earth orbit is quite inconvenient but it's not impossible. It's really just a cost and safety kind of thing. Without the motivation of something like the Cold War, which arguably was the driving force behind Apollo 11, um, NASA can't really justify uh, the expense and the risk to the safety of the passengers to go beyond low Earth orbit at this current time. But it's perfectly possible. It's just not something that's particularly preferable right now. No matter if you're on the ground, on top of a building, a mountain, a hot air balloon, an airplane, or looking at high altitude amateur balloon footage, the horizon never fails to rise right to your eyes. Again, do bear in mind that the Earth that we're all on is quite a big one. You'd have to go significantly higher than these balloons or even an airplane 
uh, to be able to perceive the curvature of the Earth, but also these photos that you're using, um, as simple as it sounds, you, you could just angle the camera down to point at the horizon um, and choose that as your eye level photo. Um, these really aren't particularly compelling arguments, but yeah, the, the Earth is quite big, let's, let's not forget that. Whether you are looking at Toronto's skyline from Niagara on the lake, 31 miles away, Chicago's skyline from Union Pier, 43 miles away, or even Oahu from Kauai, which is up to 108 miles away from center to center, or 73 miles away from the closest points, you will not see any curvature where it's supposed to be. According to the Pythagorean theorem, which states that the curvature of the Earth is 8 inches per mile squared, Oahu should not be visible whatsoever but you can see the whole thing. If there's one thing that I love as much as philosophy and science, it's maths. Now, this can get a little bit tricky, but bear with me. If you Google the distance between Oahu and Kauai, you'll come up with a figure of 108 miles. Now, if you input this into a simple Earth curvature calculator, you'll find out that you shouldn't be able to see anything at that distance under about 7,776 feet and the highest peak on Oahu is just over 4,000 feet, so how on earth should you be able to see the mountain? This is the argument of the Flat Earthers. But as you've rightly identified in your video, the distance between the closest points of Oahu and Kauai is only 73 miles, and if we input this into the calculator, we get a figure of about 3,500 feet, which means that you should be able to see the top part of the island. But even this is incorrect. In fact, the distance between the highest peak on Oahu and southern Kauai is 83 miles, which is actually longer than your shortest estimate. So if we input 83 miles into the calculator, we'll find that we get over four and a half thousand feet, which means that again, Oahu shouldn't be visible. But there's one thing that you're not considering, and that's the elevation of the observer. Kauai Airport has an elevation of 153 feet. Now, if we input this into the calculator, we finally have the correct figures. We have an observer height of 153 feet, a target distance of 83 miles, and if we hit calculate, we'll find that we should be able to see anything above around 3,000 feet. And like I said, the highest peak on Oahu is around 4,000 feet, so we should be able to see the top of the mountain. In 1887, Albert Michelson and Edward Morley conducted what's known as the Michelson-Morley experiment. This experiment was attempting to prove the speculated motion of the Earth around the Sun, and when it failed, Albert Einstein was forced to form the theory of relativity to overcome this problem. In fact, anytime mainstream science is faced with undesirable results, they create a workaround, which isn't real science at all. Now I've got to grant it to you that some of the quote-unquote arguments that you're using in your video are quite convincing, if logically flawed, but this is just ridiculous. It's like saying, Oh, the laws of motion aren't real, you know, Isaac Newton's Principia was just a workaround. Einstein's theories are still today, to the best of our current knowledge, completely logically sound. They've been tried and tested countless times and continuously proven to be true. There's a reason that Einstein is such a prestigious name in the history of science, because he got it right. The sun is claimed to be 93 million miles away, with a radius of over 400,000 miles, but can easily be proven to be much closer and smaller by tracing the crepuscular rays back to its origin in the sky. If the sun were indeed 93 million miles away, it would simply be impossible to have angled sun rays, as they should all consistently come in straight. Now this is all completely to do with perspective. Look at this picture of a road. This road is completely straight. The lines on either side of the road are parallel to each other and running in a straight line into the distance. But from our perspective, it appears as though they're getting closer and closer together, forming some kind of triangle uh, to a singular point in the distance. And this is exactly the same thing that's happening with the sun. The light rays are coming in in straight lines parallel to each other or perceivably parallel given how far away the sun is. Uh, but because of our perspective and because they're coming towards us, it appears as though they're diverging. Have you ever looked at a meteor shower? Because if you have, you'll notice that in the sky it looks as though all of the meteors are coming from a singular point in the sky and spreading out as they come towards you. But if you understand uh, basic astronomy, you'll understand that a meteor shower is simply flying bits of rock going through the atmosphere and burning up in the sky. And they're traveling pretty much parallel to each other. But because, again, of our perspective, because they're coming from further away and they're starting back here, as they come towards you in a parallel line, it looks as though, as my fingers look like they're getting further apart across the screen, but they're actually traveling in a straight line, they're diverging because of our perspective. And so it may look as though uh, the sun rays coming down from the sky can be angled back to a singular point quite close. If you consider perspective, the sun is actually a lot further away. 
According to the globular theory, a lunar eclipse occurs when the Sun, Earth, and Moon are in a direct line. But it is on record that since about the 15th century, over 50 eclipses have occurred while both the Sun and Moon are visible above the horizon. F.H. Cook, The Terrestrial Plane. Now when I first heard this, I thought it probably just wasn't true. It just didn't make any sense. Um, but it turns out that, yeah, this is an occurrence that can actually happen. Um, but it turns out this doesn't actually disprove a globe Earth. There's a pretty good article on space.com uh, which explains this, and of course I'll leave a link in the description. Um, and I would attempt to explain it for myself, but I just would not do it justice. I would highly recommend, if this is sort of tripping you out a bit, uh, go and read that article. It sort of clears everything up. It's a common misconception that the shadow of the Earth causes moon phases. Even the pastors and priests of the science religion readily admit this fact. It, is, is this... Okay, I have just spent quite a long time making this response video to, to, to this video. Please tell me this isn't, like, satirical. Please tell me this, this is serious. No, no, just, just check the channel. This, this is sincere. The interesting thing about moon phases is that they are always the exact same eight phases repeated. But if we were circling around the sun, these eight phases would inevitably be reversed from the summer to winter seasons. Well, your diagram there is simply wrong. Uh, you've got a picture of the sun and a picture of the moon in varying positions around a circle next to the sun, um, but the lighting that you've given to the moon is just wrong. You, you have a shadow on, on, if you look at the bottom moon on the right hand side, you have a shadow on the left hand side even though the sun is on the left. They should all be lit from the same side. Each one of those moons should actually look the same. The only thing that's changing is the direction from which you're perceiving that moon from the earth which would be in the center. And of course if, if you picture it in this respect, um, depending on where you look, the moon would have different phases that wouldn't change depending on where you are around the sun. I completely understand that the idea of a flattened stationary Earth seems ridiculous in many ways. You said it, I didn't. But that's only because we are taught the false globe model from the very first time that we enter a school classroom. Not to mention the first time we are introduced to the concept of a flat Earth? It's depicted as a highly laughable world where ships, boats, and water would run off of the edge. So I do get it, but it's all part of the deception. I've spent 30 years of my life believing that we were on a spinning globe. It wasn't until I unbiasedly and scientifically investigated the Flat Earth claims that I started to realize that there is more to this theory than I originally gave it credit for. And you know, I have to say that this is almost admirable. I'm a huge advocate for questioning everything. You guys know this. I, I think that there isn't a single thing uh, that shouldn't be open to criticism uh, and questioning. And that includes, you know, living on an Earth that is a globe. You know, that is open to question. Um, the thing that disappoints me is that your analysis seems to be flawed. Um, and you're right, it's interesting to look at this problem uh, from a completely unbiased perspective. I mean, personally, I I've done the same thing. When I first came across the Flat Earth conspiracies, I thought it was absolutely ridiculous. But then I thought, well, hey, hang on, my principle is to look at things from an unbiased perspective and, and go by the evidence. So I did so. I said, okay, let's assume I didn't know if the Earth was a globe or flat and I had no prior conceptions. And I looked at the evidence and I was convinced of a globe Earth quite quickly. Um, so it disappoints me that the same thing hasn't happened to you, but hopefully um, through some of the rebuttals that you must have been getting uh, to these arguments that you're making, uh, we can start more of a discussion. Because a lot of people will say, um, a lot of people do say, you know, it's a waste of time to talk to people who believe in a flat earth. It's an insult to the intellect or whatever. But I would say this, I, I would say that as long as there are people who sincerely believe something which is scientifically inaccurate, I want to do everything that I can to try and change that person's opinion. Um, and of course there are some people in the world who will just never be able to change their beliefs. Um, but bear in mind that, like I said before, these videos can be quite persuasive. They can be quite, um, quite compelling in some circumstances when there isn't healthy opposition. And so credulous people uh, might be prone to the danger of adopting these beliefs because th there's no serious opposition to them. And if we just laugh these things off and say, oh, well, it's ridiculous, let's not waste our time on them, then people who are beginning to become seduced um, by flat earth conspiracies, for instance, um, are starting to go down a very dangerous path. And if there's no serious opposition to pull these people back to reason, then they might just fall all the way down the rabbit hole. And that's not something which I particularly want to happen. I don't want people who are agnostic about this issue to fall on the side of illogic. Um, and so that is why, despite how ridiculous flat earth conspiracies might seem to be, 
Um, they are dangerous, and I think that we should still try and tackle them. But anyway, just before I go, I do want to say another massive thank you for 20,000 subscribers. It, it is just ridiculous. It really is. I mean, considering the amount of time that I've been doing this Cosmic Skeptic thing, like, it's crazy. Um, I, I honestly cannot thank you enough. But like I say, next video is going to be a Q&A, so leave your questions below or send them to me on social media, which you can find my links here. Um, and I'll try and get around to as many as I can. I love doing Q&A, so ask me anything you want. It doesn't matter how personal. I mean, if it's too personal or something, I just won't answer it. So don't be afraid to ask whatever you want. I won't be offended. Also, this video has just been purely rebuttals to flat Earth arguments. If you want some arguments which are actively in favour of a globe Earth, Minute Physics has a great video, which again, I'll leave in the description down below. Now, I don't usually do this kind of thing, but it was, it was actually quite fun. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what kind of videos I want to make for this channel. So if you did like the video, do let me know. Let me know what kind of videos you want to see. Um, because it really does help me out if I know what you guys actually want me to be putting out there. Um, all all 20,000 of you. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your feedback. Um, don't forget to subscribe. You can find me on social media here again. Um, I've been Alex J. O'Connor or Cosmic Skeptic. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.